What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Crack a Pack series. I am very excited to be recording this one because today we are opening up a pack of Shadow Moor, which is not something we get to open a ton on this series. It's a little bit of a higher price pack, so we don't get to see it as often, but it's always a fun time opening it. Of course, we are going to go through this as if it is a pack one, pick one scenario, which means we will go through every card and we will hopefully be able to determine what our first round draft pick would be, or at least have a reasonable uh, inclination as to what that might be. I did not draft during this time. I opened a little bit of this set back in the day when it was released, but it has been a while. So uh, a lot of the cards in this set are hybrid as we see just on this first card right here. Uh, that was kind of the theme of the set, but it is a beautiful set. We'll have a lot of awesome cards to talk about. So the first one here, Sootwalkers. It is a 3-3 three, three for two and then two red or black hybrid mana. Uh, and it can't be blocked by white creatures. So it has additional random upside against white creatures. Obviously, in a lot of matchups, you're not going to be up against white creatures. So in those instances, it's probably not all that great. It's a four mana three three. So generally pretty bad. Uh, this to me feels like a filler card or maybe a sideboard card. If you know you're going to be against white, it's nice to bring this in maybe. Uh, but it really doesn't seem all that great even against white decks. They can just deal, it, deal with it in other ways. Obviously, if they're a very creature heavy deck, they don't have much removal and limited that can happen. Uh, in that case, this is probably great. Uh, being able to swing in for, for damage every turn and not worry about blocks is fantastic. Uh, but generally, because there's a lot of uh, hybrid stuff in here, you're going to end up with two colors very easily. Uh, and so I don't know that this is ever truly playable. Uh, just personal opinion. Our second card here is Safe Hold Sentry. It's a 2-2 for one and a white. And you can pay two and a white and then untap it, not tap it, just to clarify. Uh, and it gets plus zero, plus two until the end of the turn. So very interesting that you can do this. And essentially what this means is uh, you can kind of swing in with this as just a two, two for two. And it's perfectly fine. It's a reasonable bear. Uh, but then you can also, if you have the mana to do so, pay three and then untap this and use it maybe as a blocker or something like that. And in addition, it actually gets that plus two toughness bonus, excuse me, uh, which does make it even better on blocks. So kind of plays a little bit of both worlds. It's a little bit aggressive, a little bit non-aggressive. It kind of handles everything. Uh, it's obviously just a two drop and it is just technically a two, two for two. So it's not gonna be crazy high value, definitely not first pick, but I mean, it's not bad. I feel like it's probably good filler for a white deck in general. Uh, Puncture Bolt is an instant for one in a red. It deals one damage to target creature and you put a negative one, negative one counter on that creature. This just seems like an efficient uh, removal spell. It's a little less uh, efficient in terms of just killing creatures than something like Shock. However, what I like about this is it's a little bit more flexible. You can kill something by technically dealing a damage and then just giving it that negative one counter that will destroy that creature uh, if, if the toughness is only two. Uh, but what this actually can do in addition is just ping a creature and then leave that one one or that negative one 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 counter on it uh, And that actually has some residual value So it's not necessarily just good as a removal spell though generally speaking I feel like that's probably what you would use it for so far. It's definitely the pick. It's just removal is always at a premium So you might as well take it early if you can uh, safe hold duo is a 2-4 for 3 and then a hybrid of either green or white. Uh, whenever you play a green spell, it gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. And then whenever you play a white spell, it also gains vigilance until the end of the turn. So for anybody that might not know how this works, if you do play a green and white spell, both of these trigger. Uh, that's just kind of how that works. I believe hybrid cards just on the face of them count as both, obviously. Uh, same as like gold cards. Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I do believe that's correct. Uh, so this card, interesting for sure. Obviously the plus side is in playing other cards with it. Otherwise it is just a 2-4 four for 4, which is very bad in my opinion. I think it's okay, but really not that great. Uh, you are relying on other cards to make this good. Granted, giving it Vigilance in particular, I feel like is quite good because it does have a big butt. It is going to be able to block. Giving it that plus one plus one is even better because obviously if you can do both, especially you're pumping it up and it's going to be able to swing in without tapping, meaning you're going to have it on defense as well. Probably won't kill too many creatures on defense, but it is going to block fairly well. Uh, though my argument against it being at four mana, you probably expect to see a little bit of a stronger creature come out uh, than a two four. And so it probably will get outpowered fairly quickly unless you're playing those green spells consistently. I don't find this to be very good. I would definitely rather have the bolt. 
Uh, Wing Rattle Scarecrow. The Scarecrows, I forgot about that. Uh, there are a lot of Scarecrows in this set, and this block in particular, if I'm not mistaken. But it is a 2-2 two -two for 3 of any color. Uh, it does have Flying as long as you control a blue creature. Uh, and then it has Persist as long as you control a black creature. So if you don't know what Persist does, it basically means when it dies, it comes back uh, from the graveyard. You put a negative one, negative one counter on it, and then return it to play under its owner's control, all that stuff. But only if it does not have a negative one, negative one counter already on it. So it can basically only come back once uh, unless you find a way to remove that counter. Uh, these Scarecrows are very lucrative in a lot of different car or a lot of different decks. Excuse me. I like them a lot. If you're in a blue black deck already, this is perfect. It's definitely something that you want to have. It's not an amazing card by any means, but it is persistent. A joke, yeah, uh, pun intended. Uh, but it does kind of come back, and it also has flying, and for three mana, that's pretty good, especially since it doesn't have to be colored mana. You're not looking for a particular mana cost. So a lot of upside to this, but I would rather be in those colors prior. Uh, old Gaspark is a 3-6 vanilla creature for three and two hybrid of either green or white. Do not like this card at all. Uh, unfortunately... It's just not very good. A 5-mana 3-6 is not going to do enough uh, in a game. It's not really going to win you the game. It might block a little bit, but that's about it, to be honest. It doesn't deal enough damage to really get you anywhere. Vanilla creatures tend to be just filler anyway, especially in these kinds of drafts, and so genuinely just not very exciting. Uh, Gleeful Sabotage is a sorcery for one in a green. Destroy target artifact or enchantment. Uh, and this also features Conspire, so as you play this spell, you may tap two untapped creatures you control that share a color with it. Uh, when you do, you copy it, and you can choose new targets for the copy. So you can Conspire multiple times if you have enough creatures to do so, but they do have to be that same color. Uh, this is obviously sideboard. Destroying artifacts and enchantments tends to be sideboard. There's an argument to be made because of the Scarecrows running around in particular that you might be able to play this main board, but I would say probably not. I don't think that they're good enough that you're going to see them every time. Uh, destroying artifacts and enchantments is very powerful, though. I would definitely suggest picking this up if you are in green. Uh, but other than that, it's not really a first pick by any means. Uh, Ashen Moor Cohort is a 4-3 for 5 and a black. Uh, it gets plus 1, plus 1, as long as you control another black creature. So this basically just gets a buff for playing other black creatures. I don't think this is very good. At max, it's a 5-4 for uh, 6, which seems pretty bad. Uh, I don't know what the power level of the general creature basis is in this, but that seems bad in just the general scheme of things. So... Uh, not very exciting in my opinion. Uh, it's a 4-3 at worst, and it's only a 5-4 at best, so seems pretty bad for 6 mana. Uh, Apoth Apothecary Initiate is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white, and whenever a player plays a white spell, you may pay 1 of any color, and if you do, you gain a life. Uh, this is actually one of those cards where like, I would probably play it if I was in white. It's definitely not a reason to be in white. Uh, life gain in general is not very exciting, but having the ability on just a 1-1 one, one is kind of fine. Uh, you usually want two or three one-drop cards in your draft deck. That's kind of max. You really don't want more than that, and a lot of times you'll have less than that. But having one or two of them is perfectly fine. Uh, and because it's a 1-1 one, one for one, it's like you're kind of getting okay stats for a one-drop, plus a bonus effect that might actually gain you a little bit of residual life. I don't think this is a reason to be in white by any means, but it is a one-drop. It's playable. So I would take it if I was already in that strategy and there was nothing else all that exciting in the pack. Uh, Wim Waiter, I hope I'm saying that correctly, uh, is a 6-4 for 4 in a blue. It can't attack unless the defending player controls a blue permanent. This, in my opinion, is very unplayable unless you are against somebody playing blue. Uh, then it technically is a bomb, but it's probably still going to die pretty quickly. Uh, my argument would be sideboard this card, but in general, it's probably not something you're really interested in playing anyway. Uh, it dies too easily. With 4 toughness, it's just going to be outmatched by a lot of stuff, even at 4 uh, four, 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 four can take it out. And so I feel like it's okay depending on the deck you're against, but it's definitely a sideboard card at best. Uh, and you really only sided in against a blue player. Otherwise, there's just absolutely no point in playing it, unfortunately. Uh, Toil to Renown is a sorcery for one and a green. You gain one life for each tapped artifact, creature, and land you control. Absolutely don't like this card at all. Life gain in general is a focused strategy. I feel like is bad, and this is all this card does. The option of playing a 1-1 one, one for one that gains you a little bit of life is that you at least gain a 1-1 one, one as well. 
And so it's something you do early on. It's a play. It affects the board. This is literally a one shot deal. You gain some life and that is it. It has no effect on anything else. I think that that's very, very bad and limited. Life gain in general tends to be a bit of a trap for new players, so I would definitely avoid this card or cards like this in general. Uh, Spectral Procession is a sorcery for hybrid of either two of any color or white, so it can either be some combination of uh, three white and two mana for each white you're not paying. That's very confusing, but max at six mana of any color. Uh, minimum, it is three white mana. Uh, you put three 1-1 one, one white spirit creature tokens with flying into play. I think that this is a fantastic card. It is a three for one right off the bat. Yes, uh, it is a little expensive depending on what you're actually running, but it also kind of leaves you open. You can run this in any deck. Granted, I would never want to pay six mana for this, so I would ideally like to be in white. But if you're short on that white mana and you are playing maybe a blue white deck, you can still play this even if you don't have that three white. So. I think that this is so far the pick. The Puncture Bolt is fine, but this is just much better in my opinion. Uh, Pure Sight Marrow is a 2-2 for hybrid of either blue or white, two hybrid of either blue or white. Uh, you can also pay a blue or white, untap it, and look at the top card of your library. You may remove that card from the game. So this is basically top deck filtering. It's okay, but you have to have a reason to tap this to make this good. Otherwise, it is just a 2-2 two, two for two. Uh, I like the ability to filter the top of your deck. I think that's fantastic. It just smooths out your draws. Make sure that you're drawing the cards you need when you need them, uh, which is fantastic. It's really, really good. However, if this can't attack, uh, it really doesn't do anything. And so you might only get one or two activations out of this tops unless you have another way to tap down a creature. Uh, and so for me, I think this is okay, but not amazing. Definitely, in my opinion, not better than the Spectral Procession. That card is just way too good. Uh, Pale Wayfarer is a 4-4 four, four for 5 and 2 white. Very expensive. You can pay 2 and 2 white and untap it. Target creature gains uh, protection from the color of its controller's choice until the end of the turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's a very powerful ability. Gaining protection uh, just means you can do this in response to maybe a removal spell of some kind or something like that. And you're going to get a lot of value off of it because you can literally just neutralize a bunch of stuff. Even against attackers and things like that, it's fantastic. Uh, it can target itself, which is pretty awesome. So you can attack with it, pay for, untap it, and give it self-protection. I feel like that's very, very good. I don't know if it's better than the procession, uh, to be honest. So what I'll probably do is keep those in the same pile, and then we'll see what our rare is right now. Plague of Verum. Uh, don't know this card. It's a sorcery for six and a black. Starting with you, each player may pay any amount of life. Repeat this process until no one pays life. Each player then puts a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token into play for each one life he or she paid this way. I feel like this is a commander card. I don't think that this is a limited card. This seems really bad and limited. Uh, a lot of times by that point in the game at seven mana, you're probably either winning or losing, in which case this is either a win more card or this is a kill you quicker card, and that's just not good. Uh, I feel like this is just very, very bad for limited. There's not much to say about that. I do think it's between the procession and the uh, wayfarer, excuse me. I would tend to lead towards the more efficient spell. However, I do think that this is very, very powerful. I just think for seven mana, you're only getting a four, four. And on the face of that, it's going to be a little bit tricky to get around things like removal or just stronger creatures. Even with the protection, I think that that's a little bit difficult. So I would lean towards the spectral procession. Uh, feel free to disagree in the comment section below. I feel like this one might be a little bit different than the norm where there's Maybe not the best clear pick, but I might be wrong. Uh, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crackerback video.